I'm gonna tell you how to make the video in your quad clear and make your quad fly better as well, and also why it works. All right, so we've had a lot of different people who have told us they've had, you know, some lines in their video. Uh, a lot of times they go up, get worse as you give it more throttle, and some other issues they've had. They've also had some noisy quads, and uh, they've been wanting to figure out a way to fix it. Um, one thing you can't really do is you can filter more if your quad is noisy and it flies bad, but there's not much you can do about the video. Uh, to fix it as well. Um, so I went through all the quads on my wall one by one and I finally found one that had bad video. Uh, in general, our ESCs don't have this problem and uh, the reason being is because we have a lot more filtering and a lot less issues. Our motors don't usually have this problem either. Uh, so it took me a little, a little uh, research or whatever, a little searching over there to find a quad that had this issue. I found one with a prototype ESC and something that uh, I, I remembered that we've had issues with is, uh, in general, these Predator cameras, they, they look amazing. They have great pictures, they have great dynamic range, the light to dark transition's really good, but we've noticed uh, that they don't, they're a little bit noisy. They kind of affect our power output and cause problems. So this quad actually has a Predator. I think it's like a V1 Predator. Um, and that is what I believe is actually causing the problems with this quad. It had really bad lines. It had really bad video. If you look at me flying here, you can see that um, the, 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 the video noise basically increases as the throttle goes up. Uh, the faster my props are spinning, the more power I'm using, the worse the video gets. Uh, basically, I've replaced every part on this quad twice um, and never got rid of the noise. The one thing I didn't replace, the one thing I kept in common was the Predator camera. Um, I've seen this before, it's, it's directly on the VBAT and what's happening is that's kind of causing the noise. So I wanted to come up with a solution to fix this without replacing the camera because, you know, we don't want to necessarily send a camera back and it just may be that the camera's drawing too much power. So one thing I'm going to show you here, let me show you what happens and why it works or why it doesn't work, and then I'll show you how to fix it. All right, I'm going to use my iPad here and kind of show what happens. So basically, the way your quads work is everything is based on 3.3 volts. The sensors, everything in this quad it uses a 3.3 volt CPU, and it basically converts whatever power you're putting into this 3.3 volt uh, signal. Now, in a perfect world, this 3.3 volts, if you had a graph here, this being zero and this being 3.3 volts at the top, the power would stay at 3.3 volts no matter how much time you have. It's just going to stay there flat and perfect. Now, in a perfect world, this is what we want, but because of everything else utilizing the power system, it ends up not happening like that. Basically, what ends up happening is you end up having noise that kind of goes up and down and kind of looks just a little bit crazy like this. Um, it's never staying at a perfect 3.3 volt and what we're trying to do with our capacitance and filtering and other, other circuits is get this circuit to be as close to 3.3 volts as possible. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is on a quad, there is lots of things connected to our power. So we have, you know, we have our motors and our ES connected to our ESC that connects to the flight controller. And what this does is this, usually what happens is the battery is going directly into the ESC and then it's going from the ESC into this power. So what happens is your motors are spiking at whatever frequency you put them at. And I know some people have used 48 kilohertz and they've had better luck. And the reason is, it's because 48,000 times a second, you're just getting these little spikes of current. So the little of the spikes, the smoother the power is going to be. The fluctuations are different. Um, so, you know, going down to 32, it might make it a little bit more noisy and you might have issues. The other thing you have is because the other thing you have is because when these motors spin, 
basically they're stopping and starting. And so power is actually going both ways. You're feeding mostly this motor, but as you brake, it's actually going to send power back into the ESC. Now, this you might be coming out at 24 volts, let's say, but when you're sending it back into the ESC, it actually can spike at 48 volts, 60 volts, 50 volts, these, all these crazy voltages. So you have two problems, basically, in this power graph. You have two problems in this power graph. One, you're getting these dips for every time, you know, it's... You, triggering the uh, circuit. So one thing you can do about these dips is you use something called a capacitor. And what a capacitor does is it stores the energy and releases it really quickly. It can release it much faster than the battery can. So it can help basically steady out these dips. The other issue you have is you have some very high frequency noise. You'll have these much higher voltages that just go up really high that can cause noise as well. So we want to get rid of these and we want to get rid of that. Basically, you can use a coil and some capacitors, which basically creates a low-pass filter for the electricity, and that kind of chops off these. And these little dips, you can get rid of with a capacitor. So you have two choices. If you're having lots of issues with video noise and other things, what's happening is something is really going crazy on your power. In this case, I believe it's the camera. The camera is just drawing power in these bursts, um, and what's happening is it's just creating an unsteady power system, but the ESC is one of the biggest culprits of this because the ESC doesn't have enough filtering. Uh, capacitors, they're expensive. On our ESCs, we put lots of capacitors. Now, other brands and other ESCs, I know there's ESCs that look like ours because we've worked with you know, manufacturers and we come up with a common design, but what we'll do is put much more expensive components or more capacitors or higher value capacitors on ours to create more filtering to give you a smoother flying. What other manufacturers might do is they will use less capacitance because it's, it's less expensive and they're gonna get by with the baseline. Uh, running at 32 kilohertz, it's going to matter more just because we're basically doing more rapid changes. The more changes we're doing to the way it flies, the more changes we're doing to the motors, things like that, it's going to tax the system more. If you're only ch changing your quad at 4 kilohertz, you're basically giving it longer period of time in between each change to kind of have the, the system level out. But we want to fly the best. We want to go as fast as possible. So we build our hardware with this in mind. Now, if you do have an issue with noise, you have two solutions. The easiest one you can do is on our board, we have, um, if you're using, you know, you're using these little connectors, we have two pads here. We have a VBAT and a ground, and they're right next to each other on the corner. There's actually one pad separating the two. The easiest thing you can do is just go ahead and put a capacitor right here. Basically what this does is it gives a direct power link as close as possible to the components on the flight controller with the super fast battery, this capacitor. Now to do this, you want to make sure you use like an FM series Panasonic cap or an FR is pretty good as well. Um, the FM is better, the FR is better. If you can't just like put it right off like in the picture, you can just put some little wires on it and relocate it. But you want to get this capacitor as close as possible to the VBAT on the FC. What that's doing is it's taking all the noise the ESC is putting in and it's kind of separating it out. Uh, it basically gives it a place for the uh, noise to go. Soldering your wires instead of using connectors could make this a little better because that kind of increases the capacitance and increases the pathways for the power, the connectors probably aren't as good. Doing an extra ground might help with this. There's a, there's a variety of things that might help. Um, and that's why I've always recommended you can solder an extra ground as well. But the easiest thing is, hey, just go put a capacitor on there. If your noise is really bad, you can use what's called an LC filter. And what an LC filter is, is not only does it have capacitors, which help store the power, but it also has a coil in it too. So the power actually runs directly through this coil, which basically is just uh, like a kind of like a ferrite ring type thing. And it actually absorbs some of the spikes, some of that you're getting out of the thing. Uh, the problem with this is, you know, it's a little bit bulkier. Uh, the best place to install it is right inside the cable harness. 
Um, so really, if you want the ultimate solution, an LC filter might be it. I mean, an LC filter with a capacitor you can even do as well. Uh, but I find with my solution over here that 90% of the noise actually goes away. But you can see on this quad, uh, what I did is I just soldered a cap directly to it. I had terrible black lines. Now, if you look at the video now, since I added this cap, it flies better, it has less bounce back, it has less video noise, it just in general, it's better. Um, so if most of my, my quads, they have our ESCs, they have cameras that don't really cause a problem, I haven't needed this. But on this quad, you can see when I'm flying here, that putting this on actually made a huge improvement. So if you do have a problem, first step is just put a capacitor on it. You can use, uh, this one's a, I think a 470 uh, microfarad capacitor. You can use a thousand, you can use pretty much any size you have around. The main thing is you want it to be low ESR. And if you want to be guaranteed it's low ESR, you can either use the caps that we include in with the, with the ESCs, which are going to be bigger, or you can buy an FM series Panasonic or even an FR series Panasonic, and that should do the trick. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Let me know if this works for you. Let me know if you have had any of these issues and they've been solved easily this way. And if you have any other good tricks like this, just you know, go ahead and make it in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I look forward to talking to you in the next video.